Hi and good day everyone. Welcome back to the third video of Antiviral Agents Lecture. In this video, we're going to discuss on anti-hepatitis agents, particularly of hepatitis B virus infections. The word hepatitis, referring to inflammation of the liver, HEPA, is the term for liver and titis is commonly used as inflammation. So, viral hepatitis is the inflammation of liver due to viral infections which are the most common cause that can injure the liver. There are five hepatitis viruses such as hepatitis A virus which abbreviated as HAV followed by hepatitis B virus HBV, HCV, HDV and HEV. And of these five types, HBV and HCV are the most biggest culprit that's involved in getting the condition called hepatitis. As mentioned earlier, HBV and HCV differs their structure which may lead to differs in their replication in hepatocyte cells and cause different treatment approach. HBV contain DNA structure, meanwhile HCV RNA structure. They have their own mechanism of replication that we are going to discuss in depth later. Different mechanisms lead to different treatments. So, let's discuss this in more detail starting with Hepatitis B virus. So, the Hepatitis B virus obtains entry into hepatocyte by binding to the receptor called sodium tau collate co-transporting polypeptide or NTCP for short. In the cytoplasm, the nucleocapsid is uncoated at the nuclear membrane and relaxed circular viral DNA or known as RCDNA is released into the nucleus. Within the nucleus, the relaxed circular DNA is converted into a covalently closed circular double-stranded DNA or known as CCC DNA which then serve as a template for transcription of the subgenomic and pregenomic RNAs. Next, pregenomic RNA gets translated into viral proteins including core and polymerase proteins, which then are assembled along with the single strand of pregenomic RNA to form nucleocapsid. By using RNA as a template, the negative strand of uh, DNA of the viral genome is generated through the process of reverse transcriptions. The negative DNA strand then serves as the primer for the synthesis of this positive DNA strand. In general, there is no specific treatment that is available in acute hepatitis B infection. This infection can be resolved spontaneously. For chronic HBV infection, the main goals are suppression of HBV DNA to undetected level, zero conversion of HBEAG from positive to negative. So you need to know that HBEAG is a hepatitis B viral protein that used as an indicator of active viral replication. This means when there is a positive HBE AG in infected person, it likely can be transmitted the virus to the another person. So, HBE AG is considered a marker for CCC DNA replications. Another goal of HBV therapy is reduction in elevated serum aminotransferase level, which is indicator whether you have a liver disease or liver injury. These endpoints are crucial, which is correlated with improvement in necroinflammatory disease, decreased risk of hepatocellular carcinoma and cirrhosis, as well as decreased need of liver transplantation. To date, seven drugs were approved for treatment of chronic HBV infections, which are also available in our clinical setting in Malaysia. There are five oral nucleoside nucleotide analog, which some of them also can be used in HIV treatment, consists of lamivudin, adelfovir, tinofovir, intercarbid, and telvivudin, and, and another two injectable interferon drugs. The use of standard interferon 
has been supplanted by long-acting pagination interference. So, pagination interference met the interference in micelle formulations by polyethylene glycol, which caused the bioavailability and half-life of the drugs much more longer compared the original one. And then, it allowing once weekly rather than daily or thrice weekly dosing. The advantage of these interference are its finite duration of treatment, absence of selection of resistant variants, more durable response. However, the adverse effects from interference are more frequent and may be severe. Furthermore, it cannot be used if patient has the liver decompensated disease. In contrast, nucleoside or nucleotide analog therapy have better tolerability and a higher response rate than the interference and considered as first line engine. This group of drugs also part of the nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors that may acquire combination therapy to reduce the development of resistance. However, the optimal duration of treatment remain unknown. Tinofovir and entercavir are the only drug that can be used for monotropy, while telbivudin, lamivudin, and edifovir must be in combination therapy. I would like to emphasize it again that this therapy is meant to be suppress the viral infection rather than cure it. So, one discontinue of the treatment, it is so crucial to monitor the patient's conditions periodically as the patient may go through relapse phase which will acute exacerbation of hepatitis and may lead to severe or even fatal. Before we discuss in depth on direct acting antiviral or known as DAA, I would like to briefly mention one of the treatment options for hepatitis B as well as hepatitis C which involve the use of man-made interference. So interferons are a family of naturally occurring proteins that interfere with the ability of virus to infect cell by producing an array of antiviral effects such as uh, blocking the viral photosynthesis and inducing the viral RNA mutagenesis. By using the uh, current combined DNA technique as well as cell tissue culture, specific interferons can be synthesized to treat these hepatitis infections. Example are pagillated interferon alpha 2A as well as pagillated interferon alpha 2B as mentioned before. These interferons exert their biological function by binding to this specific cell surface protein as shown in this diagram, which will trigger the intracellular interferon signaling pathway, which is the JAK state pathway. The activation of JAK state pathway will lead to induce the expression of a large number of interferon stimulated genes, which will produce numerous responses such as antiviral response by inhibition of viral penetration or inhibit any transcription or trans, uh, translation as well as other uh, pathways such as entry proliferative pathway and immunoregulate, immunoregulatory response by increase the host expression of this major histocompatibility antigen or known as MHC. I believe that everyone still can recap back your immunology. So this MHC play an important role to enhance the phagocytic activity of macrophage. Aside from that, it can be augmentation of the proliferation and survival of the cytotoxic T cells. Okay, so this pagination interferon alpha 2A is licensed to treat chronic HBV as well as HCV infections. Meanwhile, for the alpha 2B, is used to treat chronic HCV infections only. Okay, use of this interference usually be paired with a drug called ribavirin, which will enhance their efficacy in the treatment of chronic hepatitis C. However, uh, the availability of newer and highly effective antiviral agents for the HCV infection has greatly diminished the use of the interferons in these indications. Aside from that, pagillated interferon also may cause 
uh, severe adverse effects such as flu-like syndrome and neurotoxicity and myelosuppression and is also contraindicated to hepatic decomposition patients, autoimmune disease, history of cardiac arrhythmia and pregnancy women and as. Alright now, nucleoside or nucleotide analogs include agents such as entercalvir, lamivudin, endophobil, tamivudin and tenophobis inhibits multiple function of the hepatitis B virus polymerase by competing with natural substrate for incorporation into developing viral DNA strands. This results in chain termination and thus inhibition of reverse transcriptions and synthesis of the viral DNA. So adiforvir is a product which will be phosphorylated by cellular kinase to the active diphosphate metabolite, which then competitively inhibit HBV DNA polymerase and cause chain termination after incorporation into viral DNA. The oral bioavailability is about 50% and is unaffected by milk. This drug has low protein binding, which is about less than 5%, and intracellular half-life can be up to 18 hours. So which makes this drug can be used as one's daily dose. Adiforvir is excreted via renal clearance, thus dosage adjustment should be taken to those who has renal impairment. However, this drug may be administered to patients with decompensated liver disease. Among all other oral agents, and the povir is the most or is the slowest to suppress the HBV DNA level and the least likely to induce the HBE AG0 conversion from the positive to the negative. Emergence of resistance is up to 29% after 5 years of treatment. However, there is no, there is no cross resistance to other agents, especially to lamivudin and entercafir. So similar with the other uh, NRTI agents, this drug also can cause lactic acidosis and hepatic cyanosis due to a risk owing to mitochondrial dysfunction. Another one drug, which is the entercalvir, is an orally cyclopentanyl guanosite nucleoside analog that suppresses the HBV infections by competitively inhibit all three functions of HBV DNA polymerase as mentioned before, including the base pairing, reverse transcription of the negative strand, and the synthesis of the positive strand of HBV DNA. This drug has 100% oral bioavailability, however, it can be impaired by food. Therefore, this drug should be taken on an empty stomach. The intracellular half-life is about 15 hours and can be prolonged to 149 hours which allowing one day, one daily dosing. Similar to the adiforvir, uh, this drug also excreted with your renal clearance and required dose adjustment in renal failure patients. Clinically, suppression of HBV DNA is much better than Adiforvir as well as then lamivudin, and this drug has rare incidence of clinical resistance, which is less than one percent uh, in five years, rather than lamivudin. Lamivudin is a cytosine analog which has oral bioavailability more than eighty percent and is not food dependent. This drug has prolonged half life uh, about seventy to nineteen hours, which allow for lower dose and less frequent administration. This drug can be safely administered to patients with decompensated liver disease. The evidence shows rapid and potent virus suppression compared to other oral agents. However, the chronic therapy is limited by emergence of lami with the resistance of the HBV due to L180M or M2041V mutation they estimated to occur about 50 to 30 percent of patients at one year and in up to uh, 65 percent after five years of therapy. This resistance can cause flares of hepatitis and progressive D liver disease. 
Cross resistance of demovidin may occur to amtricitabine and entercarbine. Entercarbine. However, adovir and tenovir maintain the antiviral activity against lamivudine strands of HBV. Another one agent, tenovudin, is a thymidine nucleoside analog, has high oral bioavailability and unaffected by the meals. This drug has low protein binding, which is about 3%, but it is widely distributed. This drug is not active against HIV-1, but the serum half-life is approximately about 15 hours and excretion in renal. In terms of efficacy, telebivudine induces greater rates of virological response compared to lamivudine as well as adifobine. However, this drug always encounters emergence of resistance due to M204L mutations, which occur in up to about 22% of patients with duration of therapy exceeding one year, and this may result in virologic rebound. Another one point that you need to be highlight: this drug is not effective against lamivudine resistant HBV. Tenovovir is an adenocyte nucleotide analog, also can be used in the treatment of HIV-1 instead of HBV. The oral bioavailability of this drug can be increased to 39% when taking with the high-fat meat. The prolonged serum, serum half-life can be up to 70 hours, which allows one's daily dosing. Eliminations occur via renal clearance. This drug shows higher rate of virologic response and histologic improvement. This drug also shows lower rate of emergence of resistance and up to now, there is no documented resistance uh, being reported up to 8 years of therapy. However, the efficacy of this drug is lower in patients who have, who have resistance to adenovir and double mutation due to A181T V and M236T mutation.